Hey, what's up everyone? If this is your first time watching one of my videos, I will say welcome and um, also subscribe for future videos. If you are a returning um, subscriber or somebody who has been following my videos, I will say welcome back to our video series on how to build a Red Team Cyber Range Lab. Um, in this video, we are going to um, you know, talk about configure our machines for Kerberos based delegation attacks in the future. Um, so um, this is going to mainly focus on the types of Kerberos delegation configurations and how those can be abused in real world pen test environment for privilege escalation. All right, so um, let's, let's dig in. It goes back to Windows 2000 server when um, Active Directory was first introduced. And um, basically, there was a scenario whereby you have, let's say, a web server, um, you know, which in this case might be this machine, and then there will be a back-end database server, right? And there has to be a communication between these two servers so uh, and there was a little bit of what we call the Kerberos double hop issues um, in such a way that when a user authenticates to the web application server and there has to be a communication you know from that user to the back end if they make any request um, it, it, that there had to be a way for uh, authentication to pass through from the um, web application to the backend server. So to make it a lot easier to reuse authenticated user, in this case, maybe let's say this user who has been authenticated to this machine on the web application, to be able to use a resource on this, uh, you know, database server, um, Kerberos delegation, I mean, delegation was, you know, basically, um, you know, brought to light, which started off as what we call constraint, um, unconstrained delegation. So in a typical scenario, um, the reason why this is a big of an issue is, um, let's say an adversary I mean, uh, compromises this server, which is, let's say, IIS server, and let's say a domain admin had also logged into this machine, their credentials are going to be cached within the memories of this machine. And in that fact, you know, the attacker can actually extract or export that ticket, or we call the Kerberos ticket, on this machine, and then use that to authenticate to the server or to the domain controller, you know, thereby compromising the entire domain. So that is how serious, you know, the um, Kerberos delegation is. So the, the types we have so far and the most well-known ones are what we call the constraint. I mean, the um, unconstrained and constraint delegation. These are the ones which are mostly well-known well known because um, we see them a lot on the environment. A, a new one came out, you know, it's called resource-based constraint delegation, which is a bit more complicated than the attack is a bit complicated than the unconstrained and constraint delegation so we'll focus more on the first two and then um, in some other videos we'll do a configuration setup for the resource-based constraint delegation to see how that can be taken advantage of in, in a nutshell the Kerberos delegation or the delegation implementation basically allows us to impersonate a user that is all so let's say um, an attacker compromises the server and is able to let's say extract the Kerberos tickets for, let's say, a domain um, admin, that attacker can impersonate that domain admin and then be able to compromise other systems where that um, domain admin's credentials do work, right? And we'll go ahead and co co make, the, make, make that configuration. So we have our domain controller and we have those two machines which are going to be configured for unconstrained and constraint delegation respectively. So the first one is web02. So we will go to the servers and we will right click on web02 and go to properties. And in this instance, we'll see you know, all these options. We'll see delegation here and we'll just click on trust this computer for delegation to any service. All right, and it says Kerberos only. And then we'll just click apply and then that's it that was that simple and we can also try to confirm that that has actually you know have been applied to this web uh, you know web 02 service 
So once we have the unconstrained delegation configured on a machine, we need to identify or find which machines have unconstrained delegation uh, you know, enabled on them. So there are several ways you can do that. We can use I mean, PowerView uh, you know, to do that, or we can even use you know, PowerShell AD module to enumerate machines that have unconstrained delegation enabled. In this case, we are essentially using the get AD computer, and then we filter in for trusted for delegation. So this um, would be in, um, a unique identifier within a machine that has a trust set for delegation enabled and we are setting it to equal to. So we're saying look for all machines within the domain and if they have the attribute that says trust set for, domain, trust set for delegation is true, then give us that information. Okay, and we want it to just give us specific properties without having to dump everything for us. Okay, and then we can hit enter. And if there's any, we will see that. So um, you can ignore for the domain controller, it would always be um, available for that. But the one that we are interested in is this particular one, which is what we had enabled on. And if you see, if you look, it says true. So that is right. So that means this machine, which is the web02.gh.alpha.local, has been configured for unconstrained delegation. Okay, all right, so now next, let's go into constraint delegation. So you ask yourself, why did Microsoft come about with the constraint delegation? Um, you know, after some time, they realized that, okay, you know what, the unconstrained delegation has it much more wide open, you know, access for abuser than what they had expected. So they decided to go back and then restrict that privilege to a situation whereby you can configure a machine to allow delegation, but in a constricted, I mean, in a restrictive way, which means you have to specify um, a specific service that would have to be allowed for delegation or trusted, you know, for delegation. And that is what came about with the constraint delegation head. Um, again, this can be applicable to either a user account or a computer. So the one that we have done, um, which um, when we say a computer, it means machine account, right? So it can be either a username on the domain or just a machine account. So we are actually going to do, we have done one for the unconstrained delegation, which would abuse when a user, we can extract the user's tickets to authenticate another system. We are now going to do a configuration so that you also see both, you know, um, see another way where it can be abused using just a machine account as opposed to a real domain account, right? So let's go back to our machine, I mean our um, domain controller. And this time we'll go into computers because we are going to configure the WKS01. We will right click, go to properties, and then we'll go to delegation. And this one requires a few steps. So as you can see, this says trust this computer for delegation to specific to specified services only. All right. Again, we have to still go a step further to actually select which service, which user or which computer and then what service we need to have this delegation enabled. In this case, we want to actually have this enabled for the domain controller. So we'll go to GHDC01 and then search for it. And we are going to configure. So now we come down to the services which we should allow for delegation. Again, this is narrowing down to specific services or service which you want it to be delegated to. So in this case, we are going to use the CIFS. Um, you are not limited to one. You are not limited to one. You can select as many services as you can. Matter of fact, um, since we are you know here, we have a CIFS. Um, maybe we can um, maybe add LDAP to it. So we have CFS and an LDAP, okay? So these two services are the only services we're allowing for delegation to, okay? And then we click apply and then that's it. 
All right. So similar to the unconstrained delegation, once we have the constrained delegation configuration done, we can again um, confirm to make sure that that has been set up, um, you know, properly. One of the attributes within the AD, um, you know, attribute that we actually look for, or which is going to be present, is MSDS dash allowed to delegate attribute in the computer to, to identify all machines or users um, within the domain that have trusted to auth delegation enabled. We can just use the AD uh, module. Okay, great. So mm, we have a good. Um, so basically, if you see, it says allow to delegate to, and so that means these are uh, the LDAP, and then um, of course it goes beyond it. But basically, the LDAP and the CFS are the services which are allowed for delegation. All right. Um, another way for us to do is we can actually go to on the server manager. We can go to Active Directory uh, Management Center, and then we can go to Computers, and we can look for this machine, and then we can right click and go to Properties. And if we scroll down all the way down. we can go to the attribute editor and if we scroll all the way down we will see the msds yes allow to delegate and this will have all the services that we had configured right all right so if you double click on it this, these are all the services that uh, has the msd allowed to delegate a lot for all right so um so that is it so now we have actually killed two birds with one stone we have configured our delegation caribou's delegations um two of them for two machines with this particular video and I think that should be good enough for us. Um, if, if you like this video, I would um, recommend you to subscribe for future ones. Thank you guys so much for your time. And then I'll um, talk to you later. Bye-bye.